welcome back to season two of Small Biz Saturdays with Mo. Um, Chrissy is already here. Um, I want to thank you guys for tuning in and just for um, taking this journey with me. Um, and this journey is really just about keeping um, a platform for small businesses to um, have a voice and to share their awareness with everyone and with the community and so that we can continue to support small businesses. So without further ado, I want to um, invite Chrissy of Charismatic Creations into the live. Really excited to talk to her. She, her products look amazing. Um, so let's bring her in. What's up, Rich? Okay. So let's see. Hello. Uh, view waves at, there we go, view request. I'm drinking my tea. Look at you. Good morning. Hello, how are you? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing really good. I love you. Just vibrant. You Listen, I was going to put on a lip, and I was like, you know what? <laughs> I was up late last night um, putting a puzzle together with my boys, and we literally were up to, like, 2 o'clock in the morning because they would not go to sleep, like, literally would not go to sleep. So I just made them put together a puzzle, so we didn't finish that until uh -huh. 2.30. But either way, thank you so much for joining. How you doing? Absolutely. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing really good. Love the hair color. I love oh, everything. Thank you. I love, I love everything <laughs> about everything that's going on right now. Everything. Everything. Thank you. Um, so talk to us about Charismatic Creations. How did you come about? What do you offer? Um, there are a lot of things that I want to chat with you about because I saw that you okay. were reviewed in the New York Times. Just love everything. So <laughs> tell, us, tell us how the journey started. Okay, um, so my name is Chrissy. I am a mixologist and I own Charismatic Creations. So Charismatic Creations, we provide bar services and event staff for all different kinds of events. So if you ever need a bartender for like private, corporate, or social, um, you can hire us. We'll curate the cocktails on the mocktails for your cocktail menu and we provide the staff. And then... We also have our non-alcoholic cocktail mixers. So you can mix that with any kind of spirit that you love to drink or bubbly or wine. The idea is to create like a signature cocktail at home. Mm -hmm. So I started in 2017, uh, mostly out of like wanting to just be on my own and not really have anyone control like my creativity and my income. Yeah. Um, so I've been working in the bar prior to 2017 for like four years. Okay. And so you started then, as a bartender? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I bartended at a few restaurants and bars in D.C. and Maryland, um, Prince George's County. And so in 2017, it was just like, you know, it's time. I want to connect more with my customers. I want to be more creative without having to, like, request my creativity be on a menu or in a space. I wanted to just be in control of that. Mm -hmm. So that's how I started in 2017. And then mm -hmm. in 2018, that's where my cocktail mixers came into play because if you don't hire us, I still wanted my brand to be in your house. Right. So that's where the cocktail mixers came oh, into play. And now we're, now we're here and Moving being featured in like New York Times. So it's, yeah. it's been great. <laughs> talk, talk to me, talk to us about like how that feature came about. Did they reach out to you? Um, how did the word get, I mean, we all know like word travels fast by mouth. Um, but how did that, how was that process? Um, just one day I got an email up from a writer at the New York Times wanting to speak to the owner about the cocktail mixers. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any like type of PR or anyone to like get my name out there. It's all just have been word of mouth, mm -hmm. me providing services nonstop and then popping up around the city for people to taste my cocktail mixers. So it was, I think 
he was just researching like the new age of cocktail mixers. Mm -hmm. And so mine probably came up in a search or something like that. And so he interviewed me and then I had no idea what an article was going to drop. I thought it wasn't going to drop because (laughs) he had interviewed me so long before, what was that? November 30th. And so it came as a surprise of when it was going to drop and it felt really good to be a part of this like resurgence of cocktail mixers. Mm-hmm. It was about 30, 40 years ago, the cocktail mixer came about as an easier way for bartenders to be able to make drinks quicker. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't about them tasting amazing. It was just about how can we find like artificial flavors to create cocktails and let it be faster. Right. Now it's more about like the craftsman's sensibility of like, how can we create fresher yeah. um, cocktail mixers that people can enjoy at home um, with the bartender's perspective. And mm-hmm. so to be a part of that resurgence, that re-imaging of cocktail mixers is just really, really, really cool. Right, uh, Cause right. I love it a lot. Yeah. And you know, when I first started, people weren't buying them and I get it. You're really used to daiquiri mix and sour mix and your cranberry and your orange juice. Like you're really used to that. But now I can't keep them on a website because people are one, trusting me and two, just want to try new things. So first of all, yes. Okay. I have like a million (laughs) questions because it's like, I I want, I love to get down to like the the meat and potatoes of everything. So first of all, I'll ask you this. How many women, female-led cocktail mixing businesses are there? Are you one of very few? Are you one of many? Because this is my first time hearing of, like, mm-hmm. a female-owned cocktail mixing. Like, you you legit have your own brand, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I don't really know about, like, how many there are. Or well, not specifically. If but it's very niche. Is but this is it I, a niche? Um, it's niche in a way where I focus more on the non-alcoholic aspect of it. Okay. Okay. So yes, I do like create bottled cocktails on a monthly basis, but for me, it was the, I don't want to tell you what to drink. I want you to love what you drink and just add a fresher non-alcoholic cocktail mixer to it so Mm -hmm. you can explore more so you can have like a palate experience instead of just like taking the easier route and grabbing sour mix or taking the easier route and grabbing cranberry juice or that daiquiri mix that's probably been sitting at the grocery store for like two months right right (laughs) Mm -hmm. right Right. so i think the pandemic has like allowed bartenders to want things to be to go since Mm -hmm. people aren't going out but I think for me, it was always the focus on a non-alcoholic cocktail mixers. It was always me wanting to like partner with gardens and farms and areas so I can stay connected and so it could be fresh and so I can help black and brown farmers and urban gardeners expand. That was always my focus, whether people were buying them or not. And so now people are buying them so I can keep it moving and expanding more. Right, right, right. Um, so tell us a little bit about that process. Like you work, you work directly with farmers and gardeners too, because your cocktail mixes are that you, you use fresh fruits and things, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. How is that process? Like, do you go out and, um, you, you get your fruit from farmers and, and, and gardens and you mix it and how long, like, does your, do your cocktail stay? Like, so are they shelf right? And if anyone, sorry, if anyone has any questions for Chrissy, put them in the um the question box so we can answer and she can see them and she can answer if you guys have any questions. Uh, so most of the um, relationships have been really organic. Mm-hmm. Um, me connecting with um, urban gardeners and farmers just by like knowing someone and they say, oh well, my friend or my mentor or my old business partner owns this garden. You should check them out. And it starts just by me going and purchasing everything and me making cocktail mixers. And now it's me purchasing everything and me being a part of their CSA. Um, So the relationships are very organic. No, it's okay. 
the I, relationships are really organic. Um, and it's also based on what they have in season. Because what's normally happening is that people like restaurant, local restaurants and stuff, they're focused on like mass production and like partnering with a corporation farm who can get them bulks and bulks and bulks of things because they need. Mine is about nurturing relationships and whatever you have, I'm going to get that so I can make my cocktail mixers because you are providing fresh fruits and herbs for marginalized areas. Right. right. And you need to stay in business. Right. And so... For me, it's like a, how can my business keep you in business so you can provide right. that fresh access to those areas that you're serving? Mm -hmm. And then, like, as far as shelf life, it's like four months. We say, like, a, a best buy kind of date because, you know, since it's fresh, some fruit matures faster than other fruit. So we give you a best buy, like, a fourth month mm -hmm. kind of um, situation. I've known people where their cocktail mixers have last longer, but we have a best buy by like four months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So kind of walk me through. So I, so if I go to the site, what do I see on your site? What can I order from um, cre uh, Creates, Creation? <laughs> creation cycle. When I go to the site, what do you offer? And because you offer other, and I know, but I'm just for, for mm -hmm. everyone. Like, what else do you offer? Because you are creative. Like, I can I can see it in your entire personality. <laughs> like, you're creative, and that's one thing I wanted like wanted to extend to you is the fact that like you actually, not that other people aren't, but you took the leap to to follow your dreams and your like being as being a creative and mm -hmm. being the native Washingtonian myself like I also know that like you know coming from home it's a it's more like you work for the government you have like a mm -hmm. nine, nine job type of thing so it 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 takes it takes it takes a lot of courage and strength to like step out there on your own and really just follow your creativity. And mm -hmm. That was the other reason why I wanted to bring you on because I think it's so amazing that to, to hear your story of like how you came from being a bartender and how that like sparked, you know, ignited a fuel for you to just take that into your own journey and just like mm -hmm. run. here you are now, like you've been written up in the New York times, but that's all from like, following your passion and not sitting on that, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, so right now, mm -hmm. what you find on the website is a whole bunch of sold out stuff. <laughs> okay. You sold now out. when Stop. the website Stop. restocks, Stop. when the website <laughs> restocks, um, so we restock, we try to do it on like a bi-monthly basis. I try to restock as much as I can. So the next restock is on Monday, actually, at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. PM. So what you'll find is non-alcoholic cocktail mixers. We have about seven flavors as of right now. You'll find our like limited edition cocktail bottles that we come out monthly. We never repeat. We only repeat like one flavor because people just love it and they always ask for it. And you have to give people what they love, right? What flavor is that? So it's a contemporary margarita and I call it the tap-in. Okay. So the bottle cocktails that I come out with every month are based on literally things that I love. And so that could either be the song Tap In by Saweetie, mm -hmm. or it could be the movie Hocus Pocus, or it could be Home Alone, or it could be like, I'm basing it off of things that I really enjoy myself or that has shaped me in mm -hmm. a way, or that when I was younger, it just brings like, like nostalgic memory so this month I came up with four bottled cocktails that I'm going to introduce and they'll be on the website on Monday and then also we have garnishes so you can adorn your cocktails we have glassware we have barware so the idea is that you are shopping at like this upscale cocktail shop it's definitely upscale because everything I do is glass like, I'm not going to give you a plastic bottle. Yeah. It's all yeah. about aesthetic for me as well. So yeah. you're going to get your cocktail mixer. You can get your bottle cocktail. You could get the glass to pour your beverage in. You could get the shaker to make your cocktail. You could get the garnishes to adorn your cocktail. So I just wanted it to be a one-stop shop. 
Yeah. Just like if you were to go to the liquor store and grab a bottle before your event, you need all these other things to make this aesthetically pleasing, well-balanced cocktail or mocktail. So that's mm -hmm. where I come into play just so I can like adorn your home bar. Like your mm -hmm. home bar is where you're going to explore, but I don't want you to be boring. I want you to have right. fun with it. I right. want it to be colorful. I want it to be fresh. Yes. Um, and I want you to explore. So that's mm -hmm. where I come into play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can see, I can see that through all of your labels, the bottles, like I can see the brightness. I can see like mm -hmm. the explorations, the creative, like you can just see that through your entire brand. And I think that's really important. Um, like that cohesiveness. Uh -huh. and, you know, that you can just feel your essence and what you bring to the brand and it makes someone feel good, you mm -hmm. know, using your brand. Um, what would you, how, how many years have you been in business now? It's been what, like four years, you said? It'll be four years on January 27th. Okay, January 27th. So you're coming up on a four yes, years. Yes, I'm coming up on four years. Wow. Congratulations to that. <laughs> Thank you. What advice would you give to someone who maybe has an idea, a business idea that they don't know where to start, but they just know that they kind of have something in there? What mm -hmm. advice would you give to someone about just like starting? Um, that can be from even just like going with your passions to even just like, you know, starting an LLC, like talk to, like share some, some things about that with us. So the best advice that I ever received um, is start now and perfect later. Mm -hmm. uh, like when we all focus on perfection, we are actually procrastinating. And so for me, it's like start now. When I received that advice, it propelled me forward to like an umpteenth degree. Instead of me thinking about how do I put things in order for things to start and things to be perfect, I wasn't starting and so start now, perfect later, because when you're starting, people see that. The labels are going to be janky. The bottle might be janky. Everything that happened to me, um, the communication on Instagram may not be very clear. Mm -hmm. But what you do is you create a tribe. You create a community. Yeah. And so people see you starting, and then people see you investing their money back into your business so it can get better. So your labels can be waterproof. So your bottles don't leak at the seam. Um, and so like speed kind of like voice helps. Sorry, Chrissy. I it's completely okay. forgot to turn off. Start, start now. Perfect later. Right. Yes. <laughs> and so you can start like week. speaking life into your business. Yeah. And people see that because you're more confident. You're selling water to a well at this point. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like the advice I've received is start now and perfect later. Mm -hmm. And other, and another like thing is if you're really serious about it, you got to trademark it. Because if you love it and people see that you love it and then people see how that love turns into success, mm -hmm. They'll want, they'll, they'll be, and if they like have access to that capital or they, if they're like a bit smarter than you, they can trademark that and you have nothing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. trademark it, like mm -hmm. take your time, hire a lawyer, research it yourself and just trademark it because mm -hmm. you are putting so much energy into something that you might not own. And then someone takes it from you and then what? You start mm -hmm. something new. Yes, you can start it new. Yes, you can create another Jay-Z, right? But why do all that again? Right. Right. Yeah. And you're also a mom. No. No? Do you have, no, you have I kids? do have bonus kids. But no, I'm I'm I am not a mom. I have bonus children that I received like being in a relationship with my fiance. But no, I'm your rich auntie. <laughs> I love it. I love everything. <laughs> I love that. I'm your rich. I come through rich RT. Come on, you can do it. I'm pulling up at the function with the goodies. I live and the fur. for that. I'm your rich RT. Yes. You pulls up with the fur. Let's go. You can send them back home. <laughs> 
Yes, but I mean, as far as like mom you, life, okay, but you, with you my have, bonus so you, kids, you have bonus kids, which is also yes. even though you you know you naturally aren't a mom, that's still a job yes. itself because you mm -hmm. right, and mm -hmm. you have a fiance. So my I get my question going into that was how were how do you um, maintain a balance between your personal life and your business life? Um, because I know your fiance, Rich, mm -hmm. and shout out to Ricardo Deshaun. <laughs> He's wearing his shirt right period. now. <laughs> period. Period. Thank you. Um, but one thing, um, like in, in chatting with Rich, getting you guys on, one thing that spoke out to me, which I really loved that he mentioned, was that you guys try not to talk business and do business on the weekends. Yes. I love that. Love, love, yes. love that. And I hope yes. I'm not, if I'm digging into anything too personal, oh, like, no. let me know. But I think that that's important to share um, because we do, we have personal lives along with our business lives, right? So mm -hmm. how, obviously that's one of the ways, but how do you maintain, you know, some sanity, you know, and balance between your personal life and your business life? Um, and I'm going to be completely honest. It's still a work in progress, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, nothing is perfect, but what we did do is invest in a space where business can be business. Mm -hmm. So at the warehouse, um, we got this space in August and that's what helped separate it because at one point, all my shipments were in the living room, all of his mm -hmm. shipments were in the living room, all my stuff was in the kitchen. So it's just like business was at home. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't escape it either way like even if we were taken off we look over and it's like 50 shipments they got to be taken to the post office so when we got the space one of the things that we talked about was that you know we'll talk about business here um and then when we get home unless it's like dire we can wait to the next day mm -hmm. to talk about business when we're at the warehouse um it's still a balance since i'm a part of his team and since you know both of us have emerging brands like we want to be as successful as we want, as we can get. And so talking about business is very, very easy um, to do all the time. But it's also okay. like, a hmm, we have some relationship growth that needs to happen. We have some like personal growth that needs to happen. So how do we do that? Oh, we have to stop talking about business. Mm -hmm. And so having this designated time where, when we're here, we talk about business. And when we're at home, we don't has really helped us become closer as like fiancés. Yeah. yeah. It's hard. It's still hard, yes. right? But yeah. yes. we're going to get it yeah. done. Yes. And I love that. And, and it's, it's the working through that. It's the work that you guys are putting in um, that makes it that much more powerful as a couple. Like what so we I always say is as long as we're still working, we'll be fine. Yeah. Because yeah. once you stop working, that's when it, it goes yeah. down, but we're always continuously working on how to be better people, how to love better, how to be better friends to each other. So that's what mm -hmm. also helps as well. And mm -hmm. on the side of being a, a like a bonus mom, it's a learning pro it's a learning like process. So mm -hmm. for me to be able to, what I try to do is be as honest and as warming as possible. So whether that's like. Um, small things about teaching them how to keep their shoes clean yeah. or like um, taco nights, learning, teaching them how to like uh, make tacos. So it's just small things where it's like, a, I'm not your mom, but I want to be someone in your life that just helps you learn small things. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, in between time, like how to put on, per how to put on perfume, like those things a little. So yeah. I just yeah, try yeah, to like. Yeah small notes here you, and there you get the you get to do the fun punch lines you don't have to be you don't have to be the like all well, probably not all the time but like the disciplinary and like oh my god i'm tired of here right <laughs> yeah. fun. and i think it's also amazing that you know your bonus kids richest kids like they get to actually see you guys grow your businesses from the ground up and that's really cool. Mm -hmm. So when they come to the warehouse, we have the, like, like they worked one Saturday at the warehouse. Um, so we had them sweeping and, like, yeah. restocking the shelves or helping me ship out stuff, putting fragile labels on bo boxes and stuff like that. So it just, it's really cool to show them that 
like whatever you love to do, you can create a business out of it. Mm -hmm. And that also helps with just like inclusivity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's not going to be a doctor or a lawyer or a school teacher or a professor or or whatever. But if you love what you're doing and it's lucrative, go for it. Mm -hmm. We have to be more inclusive. So I'm happy that I can show them another side. And so like when they see me on the news, they're like, oh, I saw Miss Christy on the news. Like, and I'm on the news, not as like a lawmaker. I'm on the news as a mixologist. So that just means a lot. And I'm showing my nieces and nephews that. When their teachers ask, like, because some of their teachers know me. So when their teachers ask, like, how's um, your aunt doing? And my niece, she's like nine, ten. She says, oh, my aunt is a mixologist. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Yes. yes, come on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she doesn't make drinks. She's not a bartender. Yes, my aunt is a mixologist. She's yes. doing really well. And so that means a lot to me yes. to just show them that. And like my parents were entrepreneurs. So just the fact that I'm walking through that, it's like very cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what other brands have you, I, I know you've, you've um, connected and worked with other brands like in the city, in the area. Um, share some other brands that you've worked with and things that you guys have done together. Like you've worked with the Spice Suite a lot. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so I'm one of the Spice Girls at the Spice Suite. I've been a Spice Girl. Oh, you're girl. a Spice Girl. Mm-hmm. I didn't know you were a Spice so I've been girl. a Spice okay. Girl since, I want to say 2016. Okay. Yes. Yes, 2016, I've been a Spice Girl. Or 2017, one of those. Um, and it's been really cool to be able to just grow and level up with Angel, Mm -hmm. um, being around that kind of energy just knows that you got to stop playing small. If you want to expand, you got to reinvest. And that's who gave me the advice, like start now and perfect later. I remember when I was going back and forth about bottling my non, I call it cocktail mixers. I was just going back and forth. I need the right formula. I need the right label. I need the right bottle. And I had a conversation with Angel and she was like, Start now and you'll perfect it later. Mm -hmm. And to see my first label and my first bottle, which is just like, we're not going to talk about that. Um, And to the bottles I have now and the labels I have now, it's just like, wow, I started. So that um, partnership relationship has really, really helped me level up my business. Um, And then also it's just like Black women support each other. And Mm -hmm. so for us to you know, support each other like that. And then all the other Spice Girls just help show, you know, that Black women, we do support each other. It's not all catty. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, uh, let's see, I've had some liquor brands support me. One that's from D.C. is Black Leaf Vodka. Um, It's uh, made by a Black man. And he helped me. um, He sponsored one of my, my grand opening event for the warehouse, which was really, really dope. Let's see. Another brand was Back to Black. Yeah, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so they allow bartenders, which we call ourselves storytellers. So they allowed us to tell a story via a cocktail and those proceeds be donated to a charity. So that okay. was really, really dope. Okay. And mm-hmm. then lastly is Chocolate City's Best. So it's a bartending group in the city and they help ampl- amplify black and brown bartenders. Um, so it's been really great. I've had people in the area really show me support and which has helped me level up. And then also the, the black and brown farmers in the area too, mm-hmm. who I mm-hmm. partner with has just mm-hmm. really helped me elevate my business and for me to have a story behind why I do my cocktail mixes. Right. Right. So you ship, you ship everywhere. So it's not everywhere. just the Maryland, D.C. area. So talk to us a little bit about that so everyone knows that they can come to you and um, tell us about that shipping and um, where you service and everything. So we ship nationwide. If USPS ships there, it's coming to you. Um, as far as services, we'll travel. Obviously, mm-hmm. COVID has stopped the services a lot. So we did have a, had to pivot. Um, right. But services, anywhere the money is, is where we'll travel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then right now, our offerings are virtual, which is great. So people who I would not have met in Illinois and California and Texas, 
they are part of like they sign up for virtual mixology one-on-ones with me so that's been really really cool to be able to expand my offerings to touch people who i would not have normally touched so that's, that's a great thing what, how, that, what is that how does that work when you do something virtual i love that i've never even thought about like mm -hmm. mixology being virtual yeah, so before COVID, I had Mixology 101s in person. So people would sign up and monthly it would be like a really fun class. And then obviously in-person things had to stop. So I shifted everything online. So with, in a normal class, we provide everything. So I was like, I still need to be able to do that because people don't have items at home. Mm -hmm. So we ship them everything. There's a Zoom link. We all hop on Zoom. We do two cocktails. It's about an hour and a half class. So I teach them the art of mixology. We, we are always crafting with my cocktail mixers because why would I send you out to buy something? <laughs> you can get Thank my you. stuff. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, so we talk about the art of mixology. I teach them the history of the cocktails that we're crafting. I teach them a bit about the spirits that we're using. And it's fun. Like, it's not like something you come and get a certification for. It's something where it's like, you know, I'm at home or even when people weren't at home, I want to learn how to make a cocktail. Mm -hmm. And so I teach them how to craft cocktails from start to finish about um, cocktail ratios. And it's really fun and people mm -hmm. enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that I was able to pivot. Mm -hmm. It's cool. So someone asked where exactly asked where? at your house. At your, yeah, she said virtual. This is virtual. This is, this is virtual that she does this portion of it. And is this something, this is a service they can get from your site? Yeah, okay. actually, if you go to my Instagram page, it's a button that says book now. And it's um, the calendar where you can sign up for the virtual classes. Okay. And I've done okay. a lot of birthdays, bachelorette parties, mm -hmm. a lot of corporate events have been virtual mm -hmm. so we were shipping out 50 bar kits so every everyone on their corporation team can be on zoom and we craft the cocktail and it's been fun Love i'm that. so I happy mean, i was able to pivot that's so that's i think that's one of the beauties of like when i was going through your your page and your website that i noticed that like you are constantly adjusting to the changes and you know things mm -hmm. that are going on which is so it's like it's so necessary to do in your businesses like whatever business you have you have to be you have to be open to change and like you are just finding ways and ways to hustle and hustle and hustle and as a small business owner that's what it's about you have to and so like I know a lot of small business owners, um, even outside of like the Spice Girls and, you know, people come to, come to me and they say like, this year is going to make or break me. And I always say like, no, this year is going to allow you to do test runs of stuff. Mm -hmm. So like if you are normally a business that does in-person conferences or in-person like um, competitions, now it's time to figure out how you can do it virtually. And if the right. first one is trash, that's okay because you started. Now you know what system not to use. Now you know how far in advance you need to figure out how to get people to sign up. Now you know all these things. So with that, now your second virtual offering is going to be 100 times better. And people are now going to be like, you know what? They probably learned. And so now it's going to be way better. So I always tell them, if you're going to do something, do it. Let people learn with you. Right. So you're just not sitting here waiting for outside to open up. Right. You can't. Right. Right. <laughs> right. You got to continue to be innovative. And that's what I love. Like you just, you're continuing to be innovative with everything. Um, okay. I love everything about you're, what you're doing. I love supporting small businesses. Um, they said very informative. They're going to check it out. Um, thank you guys for joining. Um, what do we, what can we see for the future? Uh, what do you have coming up, popping up, um, for charismatic creations? Um, so next thing that's in the near future is, um, a cocktail book. And so, you know, I love teaching people how to craft cocktails, but the thing is, is that how can they get better and faster and more innovative at home? 
-hmm. So I um, am going to have a cocktail book that's going to be releasing. So you all can take a look at that when it comes okay. out. Um, follow me so you all can get updates on like website releases, new cocktails, new cocktail mix flavors, new classes, and um, the cocktail book. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So you guys make sure you go follow Charismatic Creations. Chrissy, thank you so, so much for joining. Thank you. I love your energy. I love this. <laughs> I love the creativity. It's amazing. Um, it's a huge blessing that you are still flourishing during these times. So I'm really happy for you that God is continuing to bless you and bless your business throughout this time and keep going. And you guys make sure you go and support Charismatic Creations. Go follow her on Instagram. Because you have two pages. What's your, your business page? That was Charismatic Creations, right? Yes, that's my business page. Yes, it's follow that page. Website. What'd you say? Your website. What's your website? Okay, my website is um, charismaticcreationsevents.com. Okay. Charismatic and it's in the, the link in my bio. Okay, so the link is in our page is set up so well. Love that. Because that's important, too. Because now it's like, you know, you want to be able to, for people to be convenient, just go to and just click something where they can see. So yep, the everything. more information, the better. Yes, right? So everything is on Chrissy's page. Thank you for joining, Chrissy. Um, Thanks so be, much for having me. This was fun. Yes, yes, I will be sharing some things with some family members of mine and, and some uh cocktail creations and i love that you do non-alcoholic things too mm -hmm. you have to be inclusive yeah yeah all right have a great saturday because you're in your warehouse now right yes we have retail today from 12 to 4 p.m 12 to 4 yep. so you can come pick up your cocktail mixers your glassware your barware your garnishes that's right She's thank on you the so Instagram. much Carolyn, <laughs> thank you chrissy have a good saturday you too bye okay. bye Ah. all right guys thank you for joining i think that was awesome she i love everything about what she's doing um i, I look rough so i'm sorry about that but we're gonna pull it together um this morning but i want to thank you guys for joining for coming through with support um if you have any you know of any other small businesses that you feel like they should be highlighted um tag them in my on my page or my um, instagram page at monique cash one and you guys have an amazing saturday and thanks again for joining the first episode of season two of small biz saturdays with mo i'll see you later bye